Thank you. Um, good evening, members of the ISAC committee. Apologies for the late start. Just to remind everybody that this will be being videoed. So, thank you for your attendance. Um, are we starting with that? Yeah. So, we have had apologies from Tina Clements, Ben Price, Rob Pritchard, and Jeremy Oates. So, we, we, we are a small select group, but hopefully perfectly formed, and we have a lot of exciting things, I think, on the agenda for tonight. So let's have a good discussion amongst ourselves on the things that we have got here and um, see where we come out the other end of that. So the next is the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 12th of July. Can I have a mover for that? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, just on the apologies for absence, uh, Councillor Turner um, is just a bit stuck um, getting here, so he'll be here very, very soon for the agenda item eight. Okay, thanks. So did you get yeah, a And a mover? Yeah. And a seconder. And Ben. That's lovely. And everyone is in a... Can I have, see those in favour of the minutes, please? Lovely. That's unanimous. And item three, then, any declarations of interest? Has anybody got anything? No? Right. Um, update from the Chair. I haven't got anything specific except to say um, apologies to Councillor Wood and Claymore. We do need to set a date for our... Um, our working group meet, especially in light of um, what's on the agenda and some information I've just had. So I think that it'll be timely if we do that in the next couple of weeks. So I'll look to that. Right. Um, responses to reports of the ISAG scrutiny committee, there are none. And consideration of matters referred to call to the corporate scrutiny committee. That actually shouldn't be, yeah, that, should it? That's my, yeah, my fault. See, I will just yeah. read blindly. <laughs> Matters referred to ISAG corporates um, scrutiny committee from cabinet or council, and there are those the two items. So, if we look at the first item, then the six A is ending plastic pollution. Have we got somebody to talk to this? So no. So basically, um, this right. has just been referred to the committee following full council, uh, full council petition, petition went to full council on the 28th of February. Um, the recommendations were that council um, work towards yeah. these four recommendations and that this is done through um, scrutiny. So it's about deciding what you want to do with that. Um, and we did, we did there were some responses. Oh, right. um, so I've got a little bit of information together beforehand from Steve G. But like I said, it's just decided today. Do you want mm. officers to come? Do you want to work here? Right. Ridiculous. So has, has everybody had a look at that piece about um, the plastic pollution? Something that will be dear to our eco warriors' hearts. We definitely want to be um, making sure that we're doing all that we can. So it's for us to decide how we want to work with this. I would suggest that we would like to see somebody here i think to talk us through this and see what the options are but to make sure that tamworth borough council is doing as much as possible i know it will be limited there will you know that that's often the thing that comes back is that there isn't some stuff that we can um, make a difference on but there will be stuff that we can make a difference on and we need to make sure that the people out there know that we're doing the best that we can and we're also um, communicating how they can make a difference as well I think that's always important so if we is, is everybody happy that we asked is it will it be Steve yeah so we could ask Steve G to sort of when they're here for recycling to sort of pop that on and we could also ask someone from the street scene to oh, right. talk about what we yeah. do from the council side yeah so we'll we'll get somebody in to talk to us about this yeah Ben uh, thank you, Chair. Could we just make sure that it's like really specific in terms of going through the resolutions and sort of addressing each one and how we've we've worked from this, you know, from the decision to now. Thank you. Sorry. So we're we're happy that we have somebody in then, and we we give this its due consideration. Um, so six B. Sorry. Sorry. 
Thank you, Chair. Just wanted to know um, if we're working with like, local education to roll this out for the school children. Can ask that question, yeah, yeah. And, and, and find yeah, out what's happening. Yeah, proposals. Yeah, that that's my my point about the communications of it, making sure that we're getting all of our ideas out, but also you know getting some ideas back as well, because the the you know we're never the arbiters of all the good ideas. There's always some more that can come from somewhere else. So thank you for that. Um, six B then secure industrial park. I think most of us were at the meeting at full council when this came through. Um, this is another one that's come to us for us to look at and see what we want to do. Um, do I do well, yeah. mention now? Yeah. Yeah. So if you, like I say, we, from the petition, we've got this update which you, yeah. you could share, which obviously things have changed since this, but yeah, that was an right. update from Mark Reeves before the events. Right, so so we've got an update from Mark, did you say yeah, it is? from what work yeah. had been done. So, so the work that had been done was last year a soil bunding had been creating behind the existing bollards. All the damaged bollards were replaced and new locks and chains were fitted to the access gates. The site was revisited earlier this year to increase the height of the existing bunding and our intention is to plant a native hedge along the full length of the bunding during the planting season so we're coming up to that by November to February um, and then it went on to say my understanding is there has been no illegal encampments on Dostal since the additional traveller defences were installed but we understand that today they are back um, so yeah I mean, I've got sort of quite an idea about yeah. just the sort of key thing is what we know is that they arrived last night um, yeah. and they ended by using bolt cutters to Break the right. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're being told that they did get here last night. They broke in by using bolt cutters on the stuff that had been put in place to stop them. Well, which you know that. But chains are never going to stop, are they? It, it is more a case of building something in that makes it a bit more um, of a deterrent. But. Do we have any idea how, how long they're here for? Because sometimes the police manage to get some information about why and yeah, so if it's... I mean, you, you can, we can share this information. Right. So there's five caravans and six towing vehicles, um, 22 people on site at the moment. Um, right. And they've said they're staying for a couple of days. Right. Right, so we're... we're um, so who was this from? So this was from the environmental health. Oh right. So we've got a little message here from Andrew Smith, the from the environmental health, who's been to the site with one of our PCs. There are, are apparently five caravans on the site, and welfare checks and all the stuff that we should be doing looks as if it's been done. Um, Twenty-two people there in the five caravans, and they are saying they are going to stay for a couple of days. And they've asked for black bin bags and obviously um, are looking to make sure that they're respectful of the site. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But we have to take these things at face value, don't we? And hopefully um, it will all work out and they will go when they say that we're going to go. But that doesn't stop the issue of Dostal Park being... Um, very vulnerable so we do have our working group do we do is everybody content that we we work through this with the working group because I, I, I understood from councillor Summers that there was um, a site had been identified but I never heard anything after that do we have an update on that Martin Sorry, uh, just repeat that, an update on? On a site being identified, a proper site. Early days. Um, the police um, 
basically said that it would not be as easy as it sounded and that there couldn't be as many people as we'd probably hope to accommodate on a, ten on a temporary transit site as we'd want. Um, I believe that they wouldn't uh, suggest more than six. I take exception to that simply because they're allowed to apparently turn up onto public land in as many numbers as they wish to be and cause as much trouble as they want to cause um, without any um, repercussions as such. Uh, but apparently putting them on a transit site of more than six would cause the police problems. So um, I was rather annoyed to hear that. So I'm still, we're still looking at it. Obviously the budget process is coming up this year. So we, um, I'm trying to work out the best way forward. Um, but it's been a bit of a hot potato and of course feedback you tend to get is oh we don't want this next to us um, having made pains to put the message out that we weren't intending to have it anywhere near any anybody's housing uh, or anywhere anybody uses for public recreation um, the perception is still that oh you're going to build a transit site next to us and in fact some misinformation lies was put on social media to that effect as well um, which doesn't help. So, um, yeah, um, like I say, early days, but putting a transit site anywhere near recreation grounds or housing would defeat the object. So um, I, can, I want to make sure that's put out there on record at least um, whilst we're still considering this. Thank you for that. Um, it, it is always going to be a difficult one and it, tempers and emotions run high on this but the other side of it is that there is a duty there that there should be a site somewhere around so it would be interesting to hear how those criteria have come about of only six you know when as you say it, it's not seemed to be a problem other times so we will um get our group set up and it, if possible it would be nice to to maybe get some information about that from the police as we're doing our work and find out what their justification is for the numbers that they're doing. So you're happy for now? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, are we the only committee looking at this issue or are any of the other scrutiny commission co committees looking at it? Thank you, Chair. Um, with your permission, could I ask Councillor Summers a question, please? Yeah. Um, have we looked at other boroughs and other districts to see how they deal with um, the issue of travellers getting onto the sites and how, if they manage to secure them successfully? Uh, Security-wise, probably not. Um, we. I've, I, I've given instruction that any security measures we put in place, uh, we should take the offer up that we had from the police to consult with them as to what works. So I've given that explicit instruction, consult with the police, because the police have said, we know full well which defences work, which ones get pulled up immediately. Um, so they are, of course, the best people to ask. Um, in terms of transit sites, where I've understood them to be placed, um, they have been successful and uh, essentially removed the problem because when you have a transit site in the vicinity, and not hundreds of miles down the road, but at least in the vicinity of a reasonable distance for them to be sent to, they can by law, and you can easily see the law online, you go and look, it says if you have a transit site, they can be directed to the transit site. Um, and to me, that's a defence. Because if you can send them straight to the transit site, then they have no reason to occupy the land that they are occupying at that time. So, and I, I, again, I've been at pains to say that the, the defences we put in are only as good as uh, the, t the determination of the people who are trying to get through them. And 
uh, quite often they come along with equipment, heavy equipment, building equipment, to just remove them. Um, and bolt cutters, when I found out today that they'd cut the bolt and got in through the gate, it's basically a gaping hole in what defences we put in. It's not good enough, and I've expressed my annoyance at that. Um, I appreciate that we have to let the um, emergency services into the field. I appreciate we have to mow the lawns and things, but why bother putting up posts and bunding when you've got a gate with a bolt on it that can be got through in five seconds? Um, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, so if you could as a scrutiny and far from me to provide direction to you I'm maybe making just suggestions uh, as the chair has stated he might want to work with the police and find out what defences they think work do that piece of work with them formally get it on record um, and uh, essentially I, I, I do think that defences are a good way to go and we should have them and we should spend whatever money is required within our means to do to put in the best defences we can, but we want them to be robust and work. Um, but ultimately, the transit site is the answer. And and yes, I'd welcome um, you know information as to why it's it, the the numbers that they suggest are not uh, more that more so than the the six that I was told. Thank you for that. Did you happy? Yeah. And just thinking about that number, that is never going to be a solution when we have the people who are coming en masse. So, yeah, that definitely needs to be looked at. So, are we content with that then? Yeah. Right. We will go on to um, item seven then, the extension of the PSPO dock control and alcohol restricted zones. Um, so we have a report here. Who is going to be speaking to this report? Lisa, is that Lisa? Yeah, if you'd like to. Thank you. Um, this is the extension of the public space protection orders for Tamworth Dog Control and also for the alcohol restricted zones. These orders actually all expire after three years in October of 2023. The proposal is to expend, extend two of those going forward. The one for the town centre prohibits antisocial behaviour related to alcohol um, and it is proposed that's extended. The one around Tamworth Dock Control in public spaces, it's also proposed that be extended to the likes of children's playgrounds, cemeteries, etc. The one that we don't propose goes forward at this stage is the alcohol control for Amington and that's the reason around since we have done the regeneration in Amington that started in 2018 and recently concluded the whole demographic of the Amington estate has changed due to the fact that residents left and new residents came into place therefore the amount of significant issues that we can report on in a few years gone by are now very low if not negligible um, Therefore, that's the proposal to extend from October 23 for a period of three years. Have we got any questions? Thanks, Rosie. Yeah, I've got a few questions, if that's possible. Um, could you tell me how many fixed penalties for dog fouling and dogs being off lead have been um, put forward during the last three years? Currently, I believe we stand at none. Rosie, no. in the fact that we've offered words of guidance um, and we've monitored the situation and most have taken on the guidance. We have spoken to people in the area. We've had what used to be a community wardens out in the area and street scene team speaking to people to say if there is still a problem. Um, and generally words of advice do tend to work, but obviously we have got the backup of the order if there was somebody that didn't want to comply with it. Um, a lot of the order is around prevention. It's around saying to people, please don't partake in the kind of behaviour that would cause a disturbance or upset at a cemetery or a children's play area, for example. I don't want to hold it, so if anybody else has got anything at the minute. Or, um, the um, proposal to... Um, we draw the Amington, um, the Amington one. 
just quickly, how easy would that be to reinstate should we, in the review, find out that we have a problem? Yes. What we'll do is we'll keep the Amington area monitored to see if there is any change in circumstances. It would be a relatively quick process to get that back in place if we did require to do so. I mean, the reported problems on the, the Amington estate, because it's a completely different setup of stuff. It was two bedroom flats, medium rise, now it's housing, it's family homes, um, the small communal area and green space. Um, the problem areas that we had, if you remember those of you many back, we had the statue in the middle of the carrier centre that seemed to be a little bit of a magnet. All of those things have since moved on, but it would be relatively quick to order to reinstate the order should we feel that, that it was to become an up coming issue in the area again. The follow on from that then, um, how often is the review going to take place? The review dates, we'll, we'll keep an ongoing review of the area. So we have a meeting every Wednesday for hotspots for the town. If that becomes an area with a hotspot, that would be reviewed on a weekly basis. Can I just ask a question then about the dogs? Um, you say we haven't done any penalty notices. Do we get many complaints from people? Um, we have small spikes where we do receive complaints um, and then, then we hear nothing for, for a very long period. Right. Um, we have spikes perhaps might be around, we have a burial and then we have a dog that's running loose while the burial goes on or somebody that feels somewhat challenged by a dog and then we can tend to get a couple of complaints so we up our response to the area, we get people down there, we get people engaging with users of the, of the area. Um, then it seems to go quiet again. We just the order just gives us that the opportunity if it's required to take more formal action. No, that's that's fine. It, it it's nice that we haven't had to get to that stage then of, of the formal. But really yeah. well at the moment. And, and we're obviously communicating with people properly if that's working. So that's really good. Has anybody got anything else for this? Do we have a? Thing that we are. Right, so we have some recommendations here then for the committee to approve the delegation to the portfolio holder environmental health and community partnerships for the extension of the public space protection order dog control until October 2026. Cease the restriction of alcohol in a public place, Amington alcohol restricted zone and approve the delegation to the portfolio holder environmental health and community partnerships for the extension of the public space protection order alcohol in a restricted zone to include the town centre zone only until October 2026. Are we all content with... Sorry. Oh, somebody move it, please. Oh, sorry, Rosie, yeah? Is it possible to add to the amendment about Amington that we will have the ongoing reviews? I think it does say in the paperwork. Not in the recommendations. Not in the recommendations, no, but in the report. Can, can, we, can we ask for that to be in the recommendation then, that it will be reviewed? So, yeah. we just need to sort of get the word inside the right. restriction of alcohol in a public area. But continue to monitor. Yeah, yeah. We, we is is that okay, Rosie? If we put, but continue to um, on number two, cease the restriction of alcohol in a public place, Amington alcohol restricted zone, but continue to monitor the situation. Yeah. So, do we have a mover for that? We have Ben yeah. and a seconder, Rosie. So, all those in favour? Thank you. That's carried. So item eight, Staffordshire Sustainability Board update. And this is a report from the leader of the council who is doing this report. Are you Indeed. doing it? Thank you, Paul. Apologies. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Apologies for being late. Uh, work got in the way. 
Um, right. Um, uh, I do. Uh, it is pleasure, with my pleasure, to uh, report as the leader of the council for this Staffordshire Sustainability Board update. Um, I think you've all read, or hope that you've all read the report. Um, it is, you know, we're all conscious of how important it is to be sustainable these days. You know, the, the climate change, etc., is um, is on the forefront of our um, brains most days and thoughts. Um, so the purpose of the uh, of the report is to adopt the uh, Staffordshire uh, is to draft is to adopt the draft of the Staffordshire adoption strategy, which has been developed in conjunction with the Staffordshire Sustainability Board. Uh, board, and the recommendations are that that the draft adopt Staffordshire adoption strategy, as at Appendix One, is endorsed by this committee. Two is to endorse the preparation of an adaptation plan for the borough. And there is quite a comprehensive uh, executive summary, uh, which I won't read out, but you can all read yourselves. So I do um, well propose that we recommend, take these recommendations forward. Chair? Anna, would you like to add anything to that? Um, just a, a couple of things, I think. Um, the reason why it's a draft Staffordshire adaptation strategy is because they've yet to take it through their own governance, but they're due to do that in October. But this is the final version, so there will be no changes. Um, a, a, a version came through this morning. They've just changed the foreword to reflect a new member um, portfolio holder since the May elections, but the actual content remains the same. So it, it's a draft strategy at the moment, but they will be putting it through governance in due course. Um, and in terms of the resources, etc., at the end of the report, um, I do have a budget of about £60,000 for an action plan, which is looking at climate change mitigation for borough council operations um, in accordance with our climate change declaration. Now, I think I might be able to, in addition to the action plan, also squeeze out of that budget um, the adaptation plan for the borough as well. So whilst I have said in the resources section that I would be perhaps looking at a policy change, perhaps next year to deliver this work, I might actually be able to deliver it sooner if I'm able to. So I just wanted to, to put that forwards and just update you on the situation. Um, but the adaptation plan is, um, is critical. Um, mitigation uh, is really important. For example, planting a tree mitigates climate change, but it's no, there's no point planting a tree if it's not resilient to drought, because that's, that's the direction of travel that the climate is going in for this country. So the adaptation part of it is making us resilient to the changes um, that are expected to come forwards, which is why it's a slightly different approach than just pure mitigation. So, yeah, happy to take questions. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have one straight away um, <laughs> because on one bit it says nature-based solutions such as green spaces and SUDs, mm -hmm. and my brain today would not tell me what <laughs> SUDs were. <laughs> Um, apologies. Um, you know, I am a planner and that's all we do is talk in acronyms, but um, sustainable urban drainage systems, which is an important component of any development coming forwards. Um, so it's about looking at not necessarily hard infrastructure for drainage. It's looking at, at natural drainage. So that might be drainage ponds, swales, etc. Um, so that's what sustainable urban drainage is. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yeah, Ben. I'd um, just like to know if this is sort of the first... I'm happy that this step has come like to the committee and, and is being considered. Um, how many steps have been like taken since the uh, Council declared the climate emergency? Because I, I remember reading there was a target for 2030, which, let's be frank, ain't going to happen. With the, you know, the, the, the actual target being 2050. So... So um, the, the Borough Council declared um, a climate change emergency in November 2019 um, and the, the recommendation, so it was a motion that went to full council um, and it was agreed that it related to Borough Council operations, so not the borough as a whole, just how we operate and to get ourselves ready with a backstop of 2050 but sooner if resources allowed it to be delivered that little bit quicker so it was it was caveated in that way um so i sort of if you like 
took over the responsibility for climate change, I suppose, just a couple of years ago. And to date, I've managed to pull forwards like a, a baseline report, which came to this committee um, October of last year. That was undertaken by consultants and it set our baseline, if you like, carbon footprint for the authority so that we had a starting point so that we knew when we'd achieved uh, a net, our net zero ambition. Um, so we've done that, um, but it was always going to be a two-stage process, the second stage being an action plan. So um, that will, um, and I'm just about to start commissioning that work, um, and, and ISAG have requested that's completed by the end of next year, so the end of 2024, um, which is completely achievable at this point. I'm confident in saying that um, sat here today. Um, but that will sort of um, provide the detail of which services to focus on, um, what we do to reduce our carbon, um, our greenhouse gas emissions, but m most importantly, it's how much that's going to cost the authority, um, which is the question mark, which, which ultimately will have to feed into our you know, medium-term financial strategy and be prioritised amongst everything else that needs to be delivered and paid for. So um, that's where we've got to, and this adaptation plan um, will sort of sit alongside that action plan. And there's a lot of similarity between the two, um, and I think you can achieve uh, some of those um, objectives through either one of those two plans. Again, I'll be um, commissioning it, I hope, um, really shortly. Okay, thank you. Has anybody else got any questions? Um, really interesting report, but seems to go on to some of the things that we've been raising concerns over because nothing is ever in isolation is it mm -hmm. so we're talking about mitigation stuff here of build, um, building trees planting trees and all the rest of it we have lots and lots of casework about trees and it's it's about getting that that right isn't it about where they go whether they're maintained and i think that's one of the big issues it's is that some of the mitigation things it, it's not a simple fix, it's going to be ongoing, isn't it? And also, in the little box here at the, on the front page, when we talk about warmer and wetter winters and hot and drier summers, that then brings back straight away to my mind is the damp and mould, because that is another thing that is part of the mitigation of climate change because it's making these things a lot worse. So this isn't in isolation. This is all areas of the council that we're going to need to be looking at, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think there's a quick fix on, on any of it. Um, but you're right. It's not about just planting trees. It's about right tree, right place. And it, it's having a strategy for that, which I don't believe we have got at the moment. Um, interestingly, it's a conversation we've had in the planning team very recently on a completely different work stream, which is delivering biodiversity net gain. Again, it's, it's about delivering the right um, habitats, which could be trees, in the right place and how we might go about delivering an evidence base to support that in longer term. So there's, it, it, it really does extend and reach into many service areas across the authority, if, if not all of them, because I think we will all in some, in some way um, be affected by the decision making, the finances, the governance, the implementation of climate change and adaptation. Um, and it's a big project, which is why it is 2050. Um, but we're going to need we're going to need that much time, I think, to to deliver it. Um, particularly given the fact that, say, through some of our regeneration schemes that we've got got coming forwards, you know, that's actually probably going to be increasing our greenhouse gas emissions because there'll be more buildings. So it's not a case that we can just constantly chip at it every year and bring it down. It's going to fluctuate. It's going to go up and down. We're going to have challenges along the way. Um, and so we do need the time to, to do this properly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, with the infrastructure um, projects that we've got in place, then we are going to be using up some of the goodwill for the rest of the country, aren't we, on our stuff? Um, just one question on back again to the planting. Do we already have the right skills, the expertise, 
to be doing this or is this something we're going to need to bring in? In terms of the tree, the tree work? Yeah, because, because you talked about the needing to plant the right kind of trees. So there, there is some knowledge and expertise needed in that, isn't there? I mean, we do have an arboricultural arbor officer. Um, I'm going to say arb officer because that's just yes. a lot easier. <laughs> um, they sit in the street scene team. They don't sit in, in my sort of service areas and they don't sit in, in planning either. Um, so there's definitely a lot of knowledge there around trees and their management and maintenance do they have the knowledge of a strategy of putting the right tree in the right place where it's needed? Um, I don't know, but I'd have to probably put a question mark over that. Mm. But I think, you know, having a, a tree policy or something of that kind that looks at adaptation particularly is definitely something that would need to come forwards to meet, to, to meet this particular yeah. agenda, I think. Do we have no further questions then? I think those were the um, areas I was worried about where it dovetailed into other stuff that we're already looking at. So do we have a... Yeah, yeah. What are we being asked? So being asked. Right. So we're, the, this committee is being asked um, to adopt. Well, you're being asked. Yeah, the report includes a recommendation. Right. Staff should come with the right. Appendix one is so, item one then that the draft Staffordshire adaptation strategy at Appendix one is endorsed, and number two to endorse the preparation of an adaptation plan for the borough. Do I have a mover for that, um, Ben and Lee, and everyone in favour? Lovely. That's good. Right, yes, okay, okay. Right, so we have item nine then, local plan issues and optional consultation response. So we're going to go to um, Sam, who's going to introduce this for us. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Chair. Um, so yeah, this is uh, page 63, um, local plan issues and options consultation responses. Um, there's a couple of recommendation endorsements I just thought I'd go through them. Committee endorse the recommendation of Cabinet to approve the publication of the local plan issues and options consultation responses as included in Appendix A. Uh, just to confirm, the recommendation refers to issues and options consultation responses and relates to the Appendix A document on page 68 named representation and office responses issues and options consultation. Uh, and then we've got the second uh, recommendation. Committee endorse the recommendation for Cabinet to delegate authority to the Assistant Director, Growth and Regeneration to make any final typographical and formatting amendments to the document prior to publication. Uh, just to clarify, these are minor typographical changes that also include style and appearance. So the report that you're about to hear has been authored by Richard Powell, Planning Policy Team Leader, and Laura Macy, Planning Policy and Delivery Office. Uh, she's presenting this report, and it's her uh, first time in this gig, so uh, I'm sure you'd be nice to her. Back to you, Chair. Laura, do you want to take the floor then? Thank you. Um, so, as a council, we are currently in the early stages of producing a new local plan for Tamworth which we hope will guide development in the borough up until 2043. So the first stage of the new local plan is the issues and options consultation. And this was approved by Cabinet for publication in September of last year. So the consultation went out for approximately seven weeks. It started on 30th September and ran until the 14th of November. Views were sought on the key issues facing the borough and what people felt were the potential options that could address these particular issues. The consultation was publicised via the council's website, it went out on social media and there was an accompanying press release. 
Uh, in the planning policy team, we also have a consultation database of individuals who have specifically requested to be updated on these kind of local plan progress events. Uh, so that went directly to just under 200 people at the time. So in total, we received representations from 47 parties. These ranged from local residents to local businesses, government bodies, uh, charities and developers and landowners. So planning officers have collated all of the comments that were received into the local plan issues and options consultation responses document, which is the appendix to this, to this report. Uh, the document, as you'll have probably seen, focuses on each feedback point that was posed in the consultation, and for each feedback point it lists all of the comments that were received. Planning officers have worked through each of the individual comments and provided an initial response, and where appropriate, we've also identified any further action points that we need to deal with on our side before the next stage of the local plan process. So, as included within the recommendations, we would like to publish this document on the Council's website to make it publicly available so everyone can see the comments that we received and the officer responses to those comments, and as Councillor Smith said, also um, subject to minor amendments. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Laura? Rosie? It's not a question really, it's just a comment. I just think it's really sad that we only had one business in the town that responded. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff going on in the town at the moment with the regeneration. And I just think that's really sad because it's important that we, we communicate with the businesses and it's got to be a two-way thing. And if they're not prepared to communicate with us, how are we supposed to know what their desires and wants are? I just find that very sad. Come in, Anna. Yeah, I agree. So I think I think that's uh, that's a learning point, isn't it? And when it comes to the next consultation, maybe that's something that we need to focus on as a team, just to do something perhaps slightly different, just to um, capture that that particular group a little bit more successfully. I think once again, it's <laughs> back to that word communications, and it's how we ask in the first place what people want to tell us and how they want to tell us so yeah just something we can look at again yeah Rosie do you want to come back in yeah just coming back on that it, to me it shows a, a sense of either apathy or they don't think what what they're going to say is going to be listened to so yeah I do think we need to look at different ways to communicate with the businesses because fundamentally they are the town centre aren't they Anna and just to say, we have had exactly the same issue with the Future High Streets Fund. And I'm not going to elaborate on that any further. We've tried different methods and haven't succeeded. Lee, did you want to come in? I just wanted to repeat what Rosie said, really. As I said a couple of months ago, when I've spoken to some of the businesses, they said they've not been obviously spoken to when it comes to the regeneration projects in the town. Um, when it comes to other ways of communicating, surely something like a public consultation, like, I don't know, somewhere like the, just a suggestion at the assembly rooms where you do it every step once a month or so, and obviously whoever turns up, advertise it, get councillors to advertise it as well, and or perhaps workshops. I know you've said you had drop-in sessions, but obviously no one obviously come, came to those, even though you put them at certain times. I'm sure there's many other ways we could, like I said, empty properties in the town we could use at the moment with like a board saying, you know, we've got these meetings here and then sort of thing. Or just like you say, do different parts, not just at the enterprise centre, but do it in one of our empty properties where people can, just a thought or a suggestion. Thank you for that. Has anybody else got any questions? Right. Um... Very comprehensive plan. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Which I will be reading through because I did not have that as part of my thing and I'd scrutinised everything else and not this into the nth degree. So we'll be looking at that. It's Sorry, Lee. Just one final one. When we're talking about future consultations, I know we have our council surveys go out asking people what they, and also the annual survey we've got out. 
asking the residents what chance is it of the residents to come to these public con if we do public consultations would they be invited as well i'm guessing because their views are as important as the businesses because they're the ones that want to use the town center and they feel when we've spoken to people on the doorstep they always say well we're not asked the question what we want so In terms of the local plan future consultations, or any consultations, or any consultations. Um, well, yeah, I mean, residents' views are, are, are equally as important as anyone else's views, and you know, we don't prioritise anyone over anyone else. So we would always welcome residents' views. Um, the local plan is about more than just the town <coughs> centre; it covers the borough, and it, it covers a whole range of different topics and issues. Which some of which won't be interesting to residents um, or, or, or businesses or, or or other groups, I suppose. Um, but I think when it comes to the next consultation stage, whatever that is and whatever it looks like, then we would aim to also engage with residents equally. So we, we would need a communications plan for that particular group, um, which would probably be very different to the business community, I would imagine. So I think as well, the time that the last one went out, we had a chat with the comms team about it, and it was at a very similar time to when the resident survey went out. So there was a question of sort of questionnaire fatigue that we put something out at a similar time to they, they were already being asked to answer a lot of questions. And that was one of the issues that was raised. But obviously, it was unavoidable the time it went out in terms of the time frame. But it's something to you know, bear in mind and for future consultations, I think. I, I can acknowledge how difficult this is um, to get your communications right. I had a, an incident last week with a resident who, because I hadn't put a leaflet through the door, saying when my surgery was, then that wasn't good enough, the fact that it's on the website and whatever. So we we do have to look. Different people want to get their information in different ways, don't, don't they? And we, we just have to be sure that we're catching everybody in it which is quite time consuming, but you know, we don't want to be leaving anybody behind, but we can only do so much. And as, as long as we're confident that we've done all we can to engage people, I think sometimes it's, you lead a horse to water territory, isn't it? But as long as we do all that we can. And I, and I think this particular consultation is very high level. And it's quite hard to engage in it. It's quite hard to sort of see how it affects you personally. And that tends to be in planning when people do engage, when the application is on the doorstep and when the proposal is next door. Um, so the next consultation stage, when we start looking at the detail, you'll get more residents engaging in that because they'll, they'll see the direct the link between their own lives yeah. and what's co potentially coming forwards. Uh, this is quite often too high level for residents and it, we tend to at this stage get get more responses from like your statutory agencies and your developers who understand the process a bit more and have that more strategic overview of the borough as a whole rather than a a, a smaller more bespoke view of a particular area or issue yeah. do we have any more questions right are we happy to um consider the recommendations then do you want me to read them again yes so it is recommended that the committee endorse the recommendation for cabinet to approve the publication of the local plan issues and options consultation responses as included in appendix a and number two that committee endorse the recommendation for cabinet to delegate authority to the assistant director growth and regeneration to make any final typographical and formatting amendments to the document prior to publication. Do we have a mover? Lee, add a seconder. Rosie. All those in favour? Yeah, that's carried. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for coming along. We, you can leave us now if you want to. We haven't got much left. We haven't got much left, no. <laughs> so... Where are we with the forward plan then? Yeah. We, we, we have put some stuff on the, more stuff yeah, on forward, the forward plan so now. Forward so is it, is it on anything? So the forward plan is 
the council's forward plan is there anything oh right oh to your right work? so not that forward plan then Sorry. yeah so is there anything that members have seen on the forward plan that they want to bring to our committee do we want to think about that for next time if there's anything that's going forward that we um, feel is ours and the working group updates then um, so we've talked about the the traveling one we will get something set up ASAP for that um, this corporate scrutiny have taken the lead on the housing repairs one but we have three members from this group who are on it we are just waiting I've seen emails flying around for Councillor Cook to um, to get a date in the diary, I think. Yes, Ben. Um, could we have a look at the council housing? Is it decant policy? Um, it's about the um, temporary uh, temporary relocation of council housing tenants from their secure fixed tenancies for reasons such as disrepair, investigation, transsexual behaviour, and other such reasons. around that coming to us then yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the leasehold service charges as well or is that already due to come that that will be going somewhere won't it uh, I don't So is a new report going through to Cabinet then? Then, yeah. Before so it comes to anywhere else. Yeah. So there is a, a report going on right. there on the 26th of um, that applies an update on the leaseholder service charges and sets out the proposals for the strategic re review agreed at full council. So this was already right. agreed. This is what was agreed at full council. Right. So, so that bit on the forward plan is about the um, confirmation of what was on that meeting, more or less, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. They're going to cabinet to not, agree not the anything review. further so on. Not the review. So, obviously, if you want the review when it's. Yeah, so if we can yeah. make a note of Yeah. Yes. Rosie. Um. Environmental crime policy update 2023. That's due to go to cabinet. That's new here. Is it? Okay, that's fine. Are we all happy with that then? So, um, with regards to our working groups then, so the housing one, several of us are on that and that will be coming through. The migrant one we'll be doing. Um, I think we're still waiting for Councillor Price to um, give us some dates and, and stuff about the HDB drivers, but we do need to progress these now. I'm conscious time's gone on and um, I will accept that I've been tardy, so we need to um, get them all sorted out. So is there anything else then? So just, just the work plan. Right. Has to... everybody got sight of the work plan? Are they happy with the stuff that's coming through? So we have five items on our October meeting. So we have the dual stream, the quarterly update, the local plan progression options, a monitoring report on... Is that what your report, the monitoring, monitoring report? report yeah. And off street car parking and future high streets fund. Oh, that's going to be a heavy it's one. Always, it's it's always. Always. <laughs> it's it's always. Always. It's it is. It's on the show. Yes. I think I've asked at the last two ISOCs now for um, a date on the council house repairs policy. It's still TBC. Um, is there a way of working that? I know we've got like a massive agenda, but you know, it calls for it. Is there any way of getting that in? 
Because TBC just means kick the can to me. Will that not be part of the Danny Cook it, it may be. What stuff as well? If we, we can contact Paul West and find out where that's at and come back to yeah. you with an update on where that's at. Yeah. You can share that with the committee and then okay. we can go from there. Thank you. So, any, oh, Rosie. So, if it helps, Chair, would it be possible to move perhaps a monitoring report um, onto another date? Because we seem to be very heavy on that one in October. <laughs> no, we're saying yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we can move that one. Yeah, and if we need to fit in another meeting, because it looks as if there's quite a long break, yeah. and I don't do anything over Christmas, so, you know, I'm quite <laughs> happy to fit in another meeting. <laughs> no, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, Eve, on that, or should we just liaise about that and monitoring? Yeah, as long as it's, uh, it's got to be published by the end of the year, hasn't it? Yeah, we'll have times on it, won't it? Yeah, it's got to be kind of thrown together. Towards the end of the year. Okay, Lovely. well, we'll, we'll leave yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Right. Thank you, members. Um, I think that concludes our business. And I declare the meeting closed at 7. 7. <laughs>